Numbers are all around us, woven into the very fabric of our daily lives. We use them to check the time. We use them to measure ingredients for a recipe. We use them to understand the distance between one place and another. But have you ever stopped to wonder where these numbers came from? They did not just appear out of thin air. They are the product of thousands of years of human ingenuity, a story built step by step. This essay will take you on a journey through time, a fast-paced tour of key breakthroughs in math. We will travel from ancient civilizations to the modern digital age. We will meet the people and places that shaped our understanding of the world. The solution was beautifully simple and practical. They used one-to-one -one correspondence. For each sheep that left, the shepherd might place a small pebble in a pouch. As the sheep returned, a pebble was removed for each one. If pebbles were left over, sheep were missing. This was math in its most raw and fundamental form. This basic need to count things, animals, days, tribe members, possessions. People did not just use pebbles. They carved notches into bones or sticks, creating what we now call tally marks. An astonishing example is the Ishango bone, found in Central Africa, over 20,000 years old. It features carefully carved notches, possibly used for counting. Some even think it served as a lunar calendar. These simple marks were a monumental leap, representing quantity with an abstract symbol. This was humanity's first step on the long road of mathematics. Early methods were powerful because they were tangible and intuitive. A person could see and feel the quantity they were dealing with. Knots tied in a rope, shells on a string, fingers on a hand. This was not about complex formulas, it was about survival and organization. Counting helped communities manage food supplies. Counting helped track seasons for planting crops. Counting helped engage in simple trade with neighbors. These rudimentary systems laid the essential groundwork for everything that followed proving great journeys often begin with the simplest steps. So, uh, yeah, that is where it all started. Our journey forward in time takes us to the fertile crescent between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, to a land called Mesopotamia. Around 3000 BCE, the Sumerians and later the Babylonians created one of the world's first great civilizations. With bustling cities, complex trade networks, and monumental architecture, their old counting methods of pebbles and notches were no longer enough. They needed a more sophisticated way to record large numbers for things like taxes, crop yields, and astronomical observations. Their solution was revolutionary. They invented one of the first known systems of written numbers, a crucial step in the evolution of mathematics. Instead of carving on bone, the Babylonians used clay, using a stylus with a wedge-shaped tip. They pressed marks into soft tablets, then baked them in the sun. This form of writing is called cuneiform. Their number system was clever, but a little strange to our modern eyes. It was a base 60 system, meaning they grouped things in 60s. We still see its ghost in 60 seconds per minute, 60 minutes per hour, and the 360 degrees of a circle. This system allowed them to write very large numbers and tiny fractions with surprising ease. Imagine you are a Babylonian merchant. With your stylus, you would impress a single wedge for one, two wedges for two, up to nine wedges for nine. For ten, a different sideways wedge. Thirteen is one sideways wedge and three vertical wedges. This system was positional. The value of a symbol depended on its place just like in our own number system. A symbol in one column could mean one, but in the next column over, it could mean 60. This was a huge conceptual leap forward. This ability to write down and manipulate numbers changed everything. It allowed the Babylonians to build a complex society. They created detailed legal codes and managed massive irrigation projects and developed sophisticated astronomy to predict eclipses and track the planets. Their tablets reveal solutions to quadratic equations and even a grasp of the theorem we attribute to Pythagoras, more than a thousand years before he was born. Writing numbers down meant knowledge could be stored, shared, and built upon over generations.
It transformed mathematics from a fleeting mental calculation into a permanent and cumulative field of knowledge. Well, you know, that is pretty remarkable. As the Babylonians were making their marks on clay, another great civilization was rising along the banks of the Nile River. The ancient Egyptians are famous for their awe-inspiring monuments, particularly the great pyramids and sprawling temple complexes. These incredible feats of engineering would not have been possible without a firm grasp of practical mathematics. While Babylonian math was often focused on algebra and numbers, Egyptian math excelled in the realm of the physical and the tangible. Their primary concern was geometry, the mathematics of shapes, sizes, and space, which they applied with incredible precision to solve real-world problems. The Nile's annual floods made land measurement essential Specialists known as rope stretchers use knotted ropes to survey land, recreate right angles, and lay straight lines. They knew a rope marked into three, four, and five units could form a perfect right-angled triangle. Building a square base and four triangular faces meeting at a single point required meticulous measurement. They developed formulas for areas and volumes. Their value for pi was about 3.16, not perfect, but good enough. Their math was a tool to build, farm, and govern. Texts like the Rhine Papyrus show rule-based methods, including multiplying by doubling instead of memorized tables. Our story now travels to ancient Greece, where between 600 and 300 BCE, a profound transformation occurred. While others solved practical problems, the Greeks wanted something deeper. They were not satisfied that a formula worked. They wanted to know why it worked. This birthed the mathematical proof. Thinkers like Thales and Pythagoras shifted focus from calculation to demonstration, proving universal truths like the right triangle relationship. In Alexandria, Euclid compiled geometry into elements. More than facts, a logical system. Starting from simple axioms like drawing a straight line between two points, he derived hundreds of theorems each theorem built on the last. Elements remained the geometry standard for over 2,000 years. The invention of proof changed what it means to do mathematics. It was not about memorizing rules. It was about constructing unshakable truths. This axiomatic method became the gold standard for mathematics, science, and philosophy. A way of thinking, a language of the universe, a path to timeless truths. After the decline of Greek civilization, the center of innovation shifted eastward to India around the 7th century CE. Mathematicians made a simple yet transformative breakthrough, the number zero. Ancient Indian manuscripts showing Brahmi numerals with a dot or small circle for zero. Others used placeholders, but Indian scholars treated zero as a number, a quantity representing nothing. Um, this concept of nothing as a number was a profound leap. Brahmagupta established rules. The sum of zero and a negative is negative. The sum of zero and a positive is positive, and how zero behaves in addition, subtraction, and multiplication. Combined with the place value system, this created the most efficient numerals the world had seen, our Hindu-Arabic system. Its power lies in simplicity. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero, with which we can represent any number imaginable. The value of a digit depends on position. In 205, the two means two hundreds, the five means five ones, the zero is a placeholder signaling no tens. Without zero, two five could be confused with twenty-five. Roman arithmetic with large numbers was a nightmare. The Indian system made calculation fast and accessible. It spread along trade routes, transforming trade, science, and engineering. Sometimes the most powerful ideas seem the most simple. Section 6. The Golden Age, Algebra and Algorithms in the Islamic World Greek and Indian knowledge traveled westward and flourished from the 8th to the 13th centuries in cities like Baghdad, Damascus, and Cordoba. Scholars collected, translated, synthesized, and innovated. 
Muhammad ibn Musa al-Khwarizmi in Baghdad around 820 CE wrote Al-Kitab al-Muqtasar fi Hisab al-Jabr wal-Muqabala, the compendious book on calculation by completion and balancing. Al-Jabr meant moving a negative term across an equation, the origin of the word algebra. His practical guide solved linear and quadratic equations with systematic procedures for inheritance, trade, and land measurement algorithms from his very name. They advanced geometry, trigonometry, and number theory, refining numerals and standardizing symbols. Trigonometry powered astronomy and instruments like the astrolabe. They fused Greek theory and Indian computation into a practical synthesis that later fueled Europe's scientific renaissance. Section 7. The Science of Change. As knowledge flowed into Europe, universities arose and thinking shifted, leading to the scientific revolution. Scientists described falling bodies and orbiting planets, but lacked a language for speed, acceleration, and continuous change. The stage was set for the next great leap, calculus. Independently, Isaac Newton and Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz tackled the same problems. Find the instantaneous rate of change, Find the area under a curve. Newton framed fluxions for changing quantities. Leibniz focused on infinitesimal sums. Two notations, one powerful calculus. Calculus lets us zoom into moments and sum over time, linked by the fundamental theorem. It fueled modern science and engineering. Laws of motion, gravitation, bridges, aircraft, populations, blood flow, finance, and the cosmos. Section 8. From Chance to Certainty. From smoky gambling problems came rigorous thought, correspondence between Pascal and Fermat. They counted all outcomes. Probability equals favorable outcomes divided by total possible outcomes. Insurers priced risk from shipwreck histories. Uncertainty became measurable and manageable. Today probability and statistics are indispensable scientific experiments, weather forecasts. There is a 70% chance of rain and pollsters predicting elections. They inform genetics, quantum mechanics, and quality control, finding patterns in randomness to make sense of an uncertain world. Probability helps us see signal in noise. Section nine, the thinking machine, computers and the future of math. Calculating devices are old, but the modern computer, born of ideas from Alan Turing, is different. A universal machine could compute anything computable via logical instructions. War needs accelerated their construction. Room-sized behemoths computed at unimaginable speeds. For mathematicians, everything changed. Lifetimes of work in hours. Computers opened computational modeling and simulation. They enabled massive prime searches and tests of vast conjectures. In 1976, the four-color theorem proof relied on computers to check thousands of cases. As we stand here today, on December 14, 2025, mathematics is more vibrant and essential than ever. The partnership between the human mind and the computing machine powers data science and machine learning, finding patterns in massive data sets from search engines to medical diagnostics. The story of math is far from over. It began with a shepherd's simple need to count sheep and has taken us on an incredible journey to the stars and into the heart of the digital world. Each step built on the last, a testament to human curiosity and our quest to understand the universe. The future promises new discoveries, new tools, and new ways of seeing the world all waiting to be imagined by the next generation of thinkers.